Yo guys, so welcome back to the YouTube channel. In this video, I'm gonna do another in-depth walkthrough tutorial of how I edit my videos in the Insta360 desktop studio. So, I have some footage on my Insta360 X3 camera, which you can see here, and they're gonna import that, and I'm gonna take you through my whole editing process and show you how I edit my 360 videos. So you can follow along, you can learn my processes, you can get up to speed and get to grips with the Insta360 Studio and create some cool videos. So I'm gonna jump over to my screen and we'll begin the tutorial. So we have a clip here that is something I got, just make sure I'm recording, yeah I'm recording. We got a clip here that I recorded when I was away in France and it's a luge, like it's a, one of these quite cool, runs down a luge. So I thought this could be cool to show you some of the different things we can do in the studio to get some really cool footage. Look at that, okay. So what we're gonna do first of all is, we're gonna take a look at the interface. So if this is your first time using this, you may be wondering what the hell everything does. And if I just backtrack one step, let's just say you have your camera. First thing you're gonna to want to do is transfer your files from your camera to your computer. And I use a micro SD card re card reader inside a like little SD card adapter, which I'll put a link to in the description below. Really do highly rate these things. If you have not got one, this is the one I would use and recommend. You can get it off Amazon for pennies on the dollar. And you plug your card into that and you'll drag across the footage that you want. Now, most of the time your footage will be quite big files. And we don't really want to use, well, in this instance here, I don't want to be using the whole clip in this tutorial. I just want to use a little segment of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up where our file location is and we're going to pick our file. All we're going to do is just drag this into the Insta360 Studio and it will show up here. It will try and import everything off your camera at once as soon as it detects an Insta360 card, but... I don't really think it's a very good idea to import everything because you're not going to probably not going to use all your footage and it'll probably take up a lot of space. So just pick the files that you are going to use and want to edit. That's my first little tip. And this is the interface. So it's fairly simple. I think Insta360 have done a really good job of keeping it out of the way. Keeping things super simple and easy to manage and understand. Because I've used some 360s editing software before and it's a little bit of a nightmare, it's a bit confusing, whereas this is really clean and crisp. So at the bottom here, we've got our timeline, which we can scrub through, and we can click and drag this little white line that shows us all our footage. We've got a play button. Um, we can trim our clip from the start and the finish, which we're gonna do in a second. And we've got all these buttons here, which we're gonna go into. In fact, we'll do that now. So let's just pick a little segment of this clip to work on. So let's just say we want to edit here. And then we want to make a 15 second clip for Instagram, say, or social media. So, I'm just going to trim this now to 15 seconds-ish, as an example. So first things first, you'll notice that, you know, we've set our timeline up now for the clip that we want to edit and uh, work on. Um, the, the ratio at the minute, the aspect ratio is 16 by 9. So this is perfect for, say, a YouTube video, but it's not great for a social media post that will be shown on the phone. So we're going to first change our aspect ratio. We're going to click here, and we're going to change this to 9 by 16, which is probably the preferred aspect ratio from every social media platform. If you're on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube Shorts, stuff like that. And you'll notice here, it's obviously changed how it looks, and we can move our camera around. I'm at the minute just clicking on my trackpad on my Mac and I'm just dragging the camera around, up and down and around. So we've got some freedom and flexibility there. You can see, this is how cool this camera is. Look, you can't even see the stick. You can see the shadow, but you can't see the selfie stick because it's magically removed it. Let's say, for instance, we want to... We'll just go through some more controls, actually. So we can move our camera around like this. We can hold the command button. We can rotate it, we can hold the option button, and we can go up and down, side to side. And we can also, what else can we do? Oh, we can zoom. I think we can zoom in and out. I just need to find this shortcut for that one second. So, let's just look at the interface again, look at some of the more um, detailed tools that we have to play with. So first of all, we've got the keyframe button, which is gonna come in handy 
in fact, we'll, we'll click this now. So we're gonna add a keyframe. And keyframes are basically how we're gonna edit our 360 video. So whenever you add a keyframe, you're telling the camera, this is where I want my camera to point. If you add two keyframes and they're both at different points, your camera will transition between the two. So if you set one keyframe looking straight and then one keyframe looking backwards with a five second gap, over the five seconds, your camera is gonna do this, okay? That's how 360 editing works in a nutshell. So we've set our keyframe. You'll notice this screen pops up here and we can choose all sorts of different ratios. We can do the crystal ball. We do all sorts of funny stuff. Tiny planet, so that's quite a funny effect. Natural view, so that's gonna be like your less, um, there's gonna be no lens curve on that so you can get more, like a more um, organic feel. Um, I like just clicking, keeping it default. Um, we just want to choose where we want our image to start. Now, you'll notice here we've got the pan angle, we've got tilt angle, so I'll just show you what these do. So we can pan around, we can tilt up and down. Cool. We can sort our roll angle out. We can do our field of view control, so that's gonna show us more or less of what we wanna see. I quite like wide field of views, and when we can look at the distortion, so I'm gonna be a bit careful with that so it doesn't look too unrealistic. Once you're happy with where you are starting, what we can do is we can move forward a few frames, and then let's say we want our camera to Let's say we want our camera to pan round as we're going around this corner and look directly at me. Let's have another keyframe there. And I'll just show you now what this does. So I haven't done any deep editing yet, I've just added a keyframe. So if we scrub back and click spacebar to play. So you see there's a quite a fast transition. I think that's a bit too fast. So what we'll do is we can actually click and hold and drag that keyframe a bit further around. Gonna reposition that to me and what you can do here is in the middle this is your transition so this is the point between keyframes if you click there you'll have these different options of how you want the transition to what, what you want it to do basically and you want to have a play around with this but if you keep it as smooth dissolve or none it will move between keyframes quite aggressively so I, I personally like creating a smooth transition between my keyframes and to do that I usually go in fade in, fade out. So then it's almost like blending the two keyframes and the transition together. So I'll show you now what the difference looks like. It's a bit smoother. It's not exactly perfect. But this is something you wanna have a play around with, okay? I don't wanna to go too deep in this tutorial exactly how to do it, but if you have a play around with it and don't add too many keyframes is probably my uh, word of warning. So add a keyframe at the start and the end of where the movement is. Okay, if you keep adding keyframes, the camera will have a, a tendency to jerk around a lot. So you want smooth keyframes and as little keyframes as possible. So for example, on this toboggan run, I would personally like to have a keyframe at the start and a keyframe at the end of the toboggan, and then the camera would pan around nice and slowly for that. So in fact, we can, if I drag this out a bit more, Let's play this now, let's play this clip. Let's see what this looks like now, let's play. It's a little bit smoother. Right, so that's one feature, the keyframe. That's one way to edit on here. Another way, I'll get rid of this that keyframe. Let's say, for instance, we just want the cameras to track me on this toboggan run. We have this button here called Deep Track, and basically what we can do is we can draw a square. You can click that, and we can actually draw a square on our subject. And the AI technology will actually track me going down this toboggan run. So if we click Start Tracking, this is a really cool feature. Right, let's play this and have a look how cool this is. This makes editing effortless. 
Look at that. I haven't done anything. AI has done all this. And this is going to be perfect for a lot of you people watching this who are just beginners with this camera. Because a lot of people think 360 editing is really confusing and time consuming and it can be if you want to get quite advanced with it. But at the same time, you can make it really simple with the tools that are in here. Okay. The next thing we have is time shift. So what we can do here is, I'll just show you what time shift does. Oop, don't want to do that. Time shift, we can speed up or slow down our clip. Let's just say we want to speed up by four times. Let's have a watch what happens now. So you can do all sorts of stuff. That just sped up there. Boom. We can also have motion blur. Now, one thing with motion blur, you can toggle it on and off. Uh, you see here, motion blur is on for two times speed and above. The effect will be applied after exporting. Okay, so you won't be able to see, if I play this now, you actually won't be able to see the motion blur properly until it is exported. So just remember that if you export, if you want motion blur on, you want a bit more of a realistic look and you want the speed aspect to cross some of your footage, when you uh, enable that, it won't actually show until you've exported your file, okay? So, once we are happy with our clip and you've got it into a position where you are really, really happy with the keyframing more specifically, what we can do is take a look at these tools on the sidebar before we export it. Oh, so let's have a quick look at here. So we've got all sorts of different options for stabilization here. I don't tend to change this around. I'd leave flow state stabilization, stabilization on. I feel Insta360 is a really good job of stabilizing the camera. We have the stitching. So the stitching is basically where the two lenses meet on the camera and there isn't really a lens. It's, it's the camera's AI that stitches all this camera together. So I, again, I do not touch any of this stuff. You could play around with dynamic stitching and stuff, but I, I have never really touched it. I've never needed to. So media processing. So we can do a little bit of image processing when we're in the app. So we can click Color Plus. And you'll see there that we've instantly got a little bit more clarity. We've got a little bit more saturation. It's a bit brighter exposure, depending on what you want out of your footage. Um, clarity plus again just turn that off and clarity plus on so it's a little bit different and then aquavision 2.0 that's more for if you are diving underwater and it's and it um brings the, the footage back to what it should look like underwater rather than being a bit blue or orange kind of which one it is i don't use it to do any diving so i'm not too sure but i use a little bit of color plus sometimes but depending on what you want your footage to look like you may want to do some color grading after you've exported it this is mainly just for reframing and getting your shot as you want it to look. Then we have the audio option here. So we've got voice focus or noise reduction. So if, for example, you are filming on your 360 camera and you are talking to the camera, maybe you want to keep this true audio on voice focus. Or if you are, say, on here, you may want to click noise reduction to try and keep some of the wind noise down. It's a very different sound. So again, personal preference thing. Logo settings, I don't know why you would want any of other logos on your footage, but hey, you can add the logos if you want. I always click none. Project management, again, we can organize our clips and footage in this, but I only work on one project at a time, so I tend not to really need this. And then we've obviously got the fire properties of um, what the frame rate is and stuff like that, which is kind of useful when we're exporting. So talking of exporting, we'll take a look at how we do that. So once we're happy with our clip, we simply just click this button here, start export. Now we have a number of different settings we can change in here. I always keep this on reframe video if you want to post it straight to social media, because if you click 360 video, it will give you the actual 360 file. So you'll have two um, cameras, it'll look really strange and it's not something that you want to go and post somewhere, it's something that you're gonna use for further editing. So reframe video is the option you want. Obviously then choose the file name, where you wanna save it to, and then the next part comes the bitrate. So generally you want the higher bitrate as you can get. Obviously there's a caveat with that because if you go so high then the file size is gonna be massive. I personally stick to around between about 30 and 50 on the megabytes and the bitrate. 
that seems to be pretty good. Resolution, we're gonna keep that as it is. That's nine by 16, ready for social media. And then encoding format, I usually like to keep this at H.264. That's kind of like the standard across most platforms and that's most widely accepted. If you want the super duper high quality stuff, ProRes 422 is what you want to choose. But again, just remember that if you choose that, your file size will be considerably bigger. So then we just click start export and you'll see up here, it will start doing its thing. There we go. The little bar will start doing its thing and we'll get a percentage bar at the bottom. And you can see it, it does actually export really fast. You get a nice sound and then you click export history and you will then have your footage. Bearing in mind this footage will not be optimal because I've just been playing around really fast to show you some features. There you have it. Oh, there we go. Actually, you can see the motion blur there. So remember the motion blur I was telling you about? Watch it on the, when it speeds up. There we go. So that was a really beginner-friendly tutorial on how the Insta360 Studio works in 2023. I hope this was useful for you. If you are looking for more Insta360 and action camera tutorials, check out some of the videos on my channel. I've got loads of stuff on here for GoPro and Insta360 stuff. And any questions on how to use this app with an Insta360 camera like the X3, comment below, I'll get back to you, and we'll see you in the next video.